Hi and welcome to another video in my Programming White Lightning on a Commodore 64 series. This video is going to talk about how to compile code for use with White Lightning. I highly recommend watching the previous videos in this series. This video might not make a whole lot of sense out of context. With that said, here we go. So up until now, we've been doing all of our programming with the interpreter. In this section, we're going to demonstrate how to compile code and store it in the dictionary. So we're going to create our first compiled code. And here's how it works. We're going to type in a colon. The colon is a word that starts the compilation process, and it is a word by itself. We're going to create a word called greet. So we put a space. And then from here, we put the code that we want to be compiled. So we're just going to print out hello using the dot quote word. And once you have entered all the code you want to compile, you put a semicolon. And that's it. We've compiled a piece of code. Not a whole lot to it. Now that we've created this word, we can just type in greet and use it like any other word. And as you can see there, it just prints the word hello. I'm going to introduce a new word here, and it's called vlist. I'm going to run it, and I'm going to hit uh, run stop just a little bit because it does print a lot of things out. What vlist does is it prints what's called the current vocabulary or dictionary. This particular version of fourth only has one vocabulary built into it. So I'm going to be using those words interchangeably throughout the video, vocabulary and dictionary. They are technically different things, but for what we're doing, it's just not relevant. So in a list of words, you'll see that the first one is our new one, greet. Fourth contains a dictionary that is a list of words where the most recent one created is displayed first. When we type into the interpreter, like the word greet, it actually goes through these words one by one, starting at the most recent, looking for the code to run. That's why the interpreter is kind of slow, because for each word in your command, it has to kind of search through it. So the further down a list your word is, uh, the slower it takes for the interpreter to get to it. But when we compile our code, it's creating that word greet and the words that it calls, the direct memory addresses are stored in that particular uh, compiled code. So it runs really, really fast. What makes fourth so cool is that we can combine words to make new words. So let's create another word. So we'll use colon to create a new word. And we'll call this one say hi. And what we're going to do is call our greet word that we just created. And then we'll add in the word there. And again, we put a semicolon to end it. And we got the little message OK, so we compiled it correctly. Now if we type vlist, and I'll hit run stop, you can see our two words. Say hi is the most recent word, followed by greet. So when we run the say hi command, we get hello there. Now you can see I didn't put a space in front of there, but that's okay. But this demonstrates how we can build words upon words. So here's where things get a little bit complicated. Let's say I wanted to create a new word and I use the word greet again. So at this time, I'm just gonna put in hi instead of hello. I'll put a little space here. So it compiles it, but I get a message number four. Message number four is word redefined. So the word was redefined in a dictionary uh, with new code that says hi now instead of hello. So if I were to type in greet now, we see hi. Now if I type in vlist, it doesn't actually really redefine it. What's happened is it's created a new word called greet, but it's higher in the list. So when the interpreter looks for it, it finds the first word greet and then it stops. But if you remember before I said when you compiled a word, and when we compiled say hi, it stored the memory address of the words that it used when it was compiled. So if I run say hi, I get hello there, the older one, because that was what was compiled into it. So there might be certain situations where you want to redefine a word to do something else later on. But for the most part in our casual game programming here, you probably don't really ever want to do that. If you see a message number four, just realize that you created a word that was already in use and you should probably use something else. Well, now that we've created the second copy of greet, how do we get rid of it? Well, we use the forget word. So we just type in forget space greet, and it will forget the most recent version of greet that it could find. So if we type in vlist now, now we're back to where we were before, where I can type greet and get hello, and say hi still calls hello there. Now, what if I want to delete this particular version of greet? What happens to say hi? Well, let's see what happens. So if I forget to greet, it says OK. And if I go to run say hi, I get message zero, which is word does not exist. And if I do a vlist here, you can see that both words are gone. When you run the forget command, it goes through the dictionary looking for that word, and then it removes every word up to and including the word that you are searching for. So why does it do that? Well, if we didn't do that, if we deleted the word greet, say hi would have a pointer 
to non-existent code and would and would crash. So logically, we'd have to remove everything from that point and up to the most recent line of code. Okay, so that's all kind of interesting. But now let's use this knowledge that we just learned to compile our program. So let's clear the screen here. Let's start doing by a page one load. This of course brings in our nice colors that we like. And now let's do 10 load, where it's gonna load our code in and run it through the interpreter line by line. So here it clears the screen. It's gonna draw our triangles, it's gonna draw our circle. A uh, little bit of flicker. It's, every, so every time it goes to disk, it kind of gets a little uh, tripped up. There's our attributes, it comes with text at the top and it's almost done and now it's done. So that takes about 18 seconds. And if I wanted to run it again, it would have to go through the same process off the disk. That's obviously not how uh, we want to do this. So let's flip back to low res mode by typing in the word low res. And I think that's also a new word we have not run into before. And that just puts us back into text mode. And let's take a look at page 10 uh, and see what it looks like. So to take this interpreted code and compile it, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, what we want to do first is we want to insert a blank line uh, at line zero. So we use that spread command to do that, that we learned in our second video. And then we're going to insert a line at the very top. So we're going to use the P command to put source code at line zero. And we're just going to type in colon space do it. This is going to create a word called do it that's going to be all of this code. So we're just going to press enter. We'll flush the disk buffers. Then we'll type a list to just get a, oops. We're gonna type 10 list here to get a nice good view of what, what we've changed. So here we can see that when we run a 10 load, instead of running this code now, it's gonna start the compiler and it's gonna go through each one of those lines of code and compile it into that word do it. When you see the continue that's on line 13, and again, that dash dash greater than sign, that looks like an error tells the load command to flip to the next page well the compiler is going to flip to the next page and continue loading more commands in until it sees a semicolon so let's take a look at page 11 because we clearly need to add a semicolon to the bottom of this and this is really easy we can just do it on line four there so we'll just put a semicolon there we're going to flush the disk buffers out so it's completely written to disk and that's it so let's do a cold reset we'll type in the word cold to reset environment. And just a kind of highlight of what cold does is it resets the dictionary back and everything as if we just loaded white lightning. So it's a really quick way to to do to test code like this where we just want to reset and start over without having to reload the whole environment. Okay, and what we do now is type 10 load. So now this time, instead of running those lines one by one, it's going through the compiler and it's going to add the word do it to our dictionary. And this just takes a few moments to run. There it goes. So now if we do a V list, we'll see do it is at the top of the dictionary. So let's see how much faster this is. Ah, much better. Instead of 18 seconds, this runs in about three and a half seconds. And of course, we could run it again and again and again because it's compiled code just sitting in memory. So the development process in fourth that we get to use going forward kind of goes like this. We kind of experiment with some commands. We kind of get a feel for what we want to do. We create words, which is compiled code that combines up functionality so it runs quicker. And then as our program gets more complicated, we create more words that use a combination of the words that we created to create our application. And we get to do this all interactively, which is really, really nice. So that's all there is to compiling software with Forth. In our next video, we're going to use this knowledge to create animation and special effects. This is where things get really fun. So looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.